Well, the article by by Mr. Mellon really set me off looking into the scope of NORAD and its reach in early warnings and aerospace defense. And by looking into publicly available information, I found that NORAD is indeed operating on a larger scope than I previously imagined, being operationally present at facilities such as Joint Base Elmdorf Richardson in Alaska, Tyndall Air Force Base in Florida, and even overseas, for example, Example at Tolly Air Force Base in Greenland. Part of the potential threat response to airspace incursions is a Project Noble Eagle, which has been in place since 9-11. And this involves a report coming in from a specific region to N2C2 command domain, which results in a rapid response with the scrambling of jet interceptions to interpret and identify aircraft that either don't show a transponder signal or enter restricted airspace, among other things, being perceived as a potential threat. Now, it makes sense to me that there must have been occasions where jets have been scrambled to interpret aircraft demonstrating anomalous flight characteristics, such as what we see with UAP. Are you aware of this being the case with any reports you've seen? Yeah, Christina, it happens a lot more than you might think. Um, I uh, I had the honor and privilege of speaking with a, a former watch officer of, at NORAD, a uh, a colonel, which, as most people know, is, is is fairly senior in rank. I mean, this is not a not a spring chicken. Uh, this is somebody who's being groomed probably for for general officer and and, and some significant command positions. And so, um, the watch officer's job is just that: is it's it's to watch the skies, watch what's going on have a uh, persistent situation awareness of the uh, uh, airspace. And uh, one of the incidents that he was recalling to us was that uh, they picked up a UAP uh, up over Canada. And as you said before, Canada and the U.S. share a, a airspace together, especially over North America. And so we, we cooperate together. In fact, the, the deputy commander of NORAD is a Canadian. A lot of people don't know that. And so we work together to, to protect our, our skies together. And there was a UAP coming in uh, out of uh, out of um, out of Canada, very very fast, very very high, uh, to the point where uh, the commander on the ground there at NORAD said, "I want you to launch everything we we have against this thing and catch it. I want to know what this thing is." And as this thing pursued uh, continued and was pursued by our aircraft, it continued over the eastern seaboard and wound up leaving uh, U.S. airspace somewhere over uh, over Florida towards Cuba. And uh, we weren't ever able to catch it. Now think about what that means, right? The, the best and the, and the strongest country in the world with some of the most sophisticated aircraft, um, despite the commander saying, throw everything we have at it and try to catch this thing, we weren't able to do it. Um, and so that's just one example of many where where Nord has been engaged in these things. But let's 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 preface this. NORAD isn't necessarily going to call them UAP, okay, or UFOs. Um, chances are they're going to call them something else, uh, probably something to the tune of a, a, a unresolved um, type anomaly. And uh, therein lies part of the problem because when you do a Freedom of Information Act and you say, "What do you have on UFOs?" NORAD says, "We don't, <laughs> because we don't track UFOs. Uh, what we track are, are something else. We call them something else." And so. Um, there, therein lies some of the challenge when people are trying to say, well, you know, I, 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 I submitted a Freedom of Information Act to NORAD and it came back with nothing. Well, because you're asking for the wrong thing, unfortunately. Was there a significant number of those Noble Eagle cases that ended up classified as unknowns? Um, you know, I'm not going to comment on th something that might or might not be classified. I have to be very careful with that. Um, as you know, Christina and, and some of your listeners, I still hold a, a security clearance. Um, I still have am obligated to protect classified information, and I intend to do so. So I, I don't want to say anything that could compromise in any way some sort of national security capability. Um, so as far as what might be classified and what might be unclassified, um, uh, unless I'm sure something is unclassified, I, I just I just simply can't talk about it. And I totally understand that. So when there is an active threat assessment situation occurring, there is a part of the operation called ONEC, which stands for Operation Noble Eagle Conference, which where where various intelligence and security agencies are long pulled into the data stream. 
Are you of the opinion that any of those reports pertaining to UAP specifically will be declassified? And if not, will they at least get in front of the eyes of members of Congress? Yeah, I'm very confident that Congress, you know, Congress is persistent and uh, Congress is now now. Uh, been made aware of the fact that that these things are real and that the U.S. government knows that they're real. So, so they are definitely on the case. Um, will they be brought into the loop on everything that the executive branch knows? Uh, that remains to be seen. Um, but enough people now are talking to Congress where the executive branch now uh, there's an expectation to to deliver some information. And this is why you see with the recent Gillibrand amendment. Uh, that was a bipartisan effort with with folks like Marco Rubio, et cetera. Um, this is truly historic because they're not going to allow obfuscation anymore. They're not going to allow people to say, well, you know, we really don't know. Well, you know what? We're paying you to know. So if you don't know, we'll fire you and we'll find somebody else who can find out. But to say that you don't know anymore and it's not a priority, um, that that doesn't fly. That 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 excuse is is no mas. Um, we, we now have an obligation to to reconcile and try to figure out what these things are, whatever they may be. Um, we we now have to have a, have that conversation. And so Congress, I don't think, is going to going to let this go. Um, I do think that there are some efforts right now behind the scenes with the executive branch to finally do the right thing. Um, my old office in particular, USDI, I'm not going to say which specific office is within, um, but there does seem to be some leadership engagement saying, okay, you know what, maybe you're right. Maybe we should, maybe we should look at this a little bit differently. Maybe we need to write the, hire the right expertise and the, and the right people to, to actually look at this and not just whitewash it and try to bury it. Um, you know, I, I remain hopeful, but make no mistake. If, if, if it turns out that this is going to be a tip 2.0 and they're going to try to obfuscate and bury this thing, then, then we will continue to be very, very vocal and, and call these people out by name. I have no problem doing that at all.